Nathan, sorry. I guess that was my cue. Sorry, no, sorry. I, I, uh, I was on mute. Um, I apologize. Thanks. Thanks for making the movie. Um, if you want to take it away here. Sure. I am really thrilled to introduce David to everyone and really delighted that um, you all are going to have a chance to, to meet him um, having selected your works for recognition. And David and I go way back because I was hired here at the Art Center by his wife, Nancy McIntyre, uh, uh, the former executive director of the Art Center of many, many years and really brought it to um, a real point of, of vitality. Uh, and David was a big part of that. So David, uh, graduated from Georgia State University and studied English as well as a minor in visual arts 
And um, he was lured by Nancy, they fell in love, to come to Dunedin when he was, had been living in Arizona at the time. And uh, over the course of 20 years, he went from being uh, the, the, our publicist and uh, marketing guru at DFAC and ultimately the curator. And, uh, and he was, David was here when I started and he has since, he was director of the um, Tampa Bay Automo Automobile Museum. And then he also worked at the Greenville Museum of Art in North Carolina, was uh, director of the Beach Art Center in Indian Rocks. And he continues to freelance uh, and consult at this point. So we were honored that he accepted our invitation to be the judge for Mapped Out. And I can say that he spent a lot of time um, after hours really looking at the work, was very, very thoughtful in his um, award selections. So welcome, David. We, we have a little uh, notice in the gallery that tells all about David and the concept of the show, which was um, uh, using maps as a springboard, as a metaphor, to use mapping as an uh, actual collage element. Two and 3D works were accepted for this call to entry uh, opportunity. And we also have David's comments on his award selections available in the gallery if you haven't been in lately. And we've had a great response to the show. So David, take it away. Thank you, Kathy. It was a very nice intro. <clears throat> um, I was thrilled to be asked to do this. Uh, I haven't judged the show in a good while. And um, it was a great pleasure because everything in the show was great. I'll start off by saying that there's, there's just, it was hard. It's very difficult to make decisions about ranking people's work when the uh, caliber is so high. Um, I think that the greatest appeal for some of the work is that they work so well as art, whether or not you're looking for or seeing the theme. And the differences in the work, some in many it was obvious that yes, there was a theme, there's a, a map theme, a travel theme or whatever. Others, you had to look a little harder, but they were so good it didn't matter. And that was a lot of fun. Um, the, the works that were completely immersed in the theme were as good as the very abstract works. So congratulations to everybody. And uh, pleasure to, to take the time to engage with everything as I got to do. I did spend a lot of time, and I think I mentioned in my notes that the ones that really connected were the ones that I couldn't stop looking at. I had to keep turning around and going back. And then eventually I just sat in front of each one, put my thoughts together and said, you know, th this is great. So um, without spending a whole lot of time right now, I think we should have the artists talk. And if I need, uh, am asked to engage, make comments from there, I'm, I'm here to go. So uh, we'll continue from there. Thank you. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Um, well, then our, our first artist to speak will be um, Diane Rodell, who has won the, uh, been awarded the best of show. Um, Diane, you're a, an artist from Old Smar, living in Old Smar. And, and uh, just to let everyone know, uh, I've included uh, either a website or an Instagram page or some. <clears throat> digital location where you can see more of the artist's work. So Diane, why don't you to uh, tell us about your award-winning piece here? <clears throat> well, I was inspired to learn to paint after a primordial moment on the beach, on Melbourne Beach, watching a sea turtle come ashore to nest. 
And the next day we went out and found the, her tracks. And this pattern was so beautiful that I thought I have to document this and I have to learn how to paint in order to do that. So that's what I did. I signed up at Dunning Fine Arts Center um, and I got abstract expressionism was the only class I could take and I fell in love with it. Since then, I go to the beach, I take photos of the turtle tracks and then I abstract them in some way. This is actually a painting of this sea turtle track that I found on June 24th of 2017 at eight o'clock in the morning. And um, as you can see here, there, this little track down the middle, there's a little dots, which on my painting I made yellow, um, is a green turtle tail drop. So that is, um, but when I was painting it, I started thinking, I didn't start out with all the black lines. I just started out putting the geometric shapes and a little bit of texture. And it started to remind me of a highway, which was A1A runs right up through there. And then I got the idea, well, maybe I'll go around all my little areas of texture with a number two brush and some black paint to outline them and paint in more of the, of the actual swirls in the sand on the left. and fade out to the right. Then I started thinking, well, this looks kind of like all the, um, of course, that's what's great about abstract. You can see whatever you want to see in them. But then I started thinking, well, that looks kind of like all the development on one side of A1A and just some, a couple of things on the, on the, well, as you're looking at it on the right side, which goes to the beach and fades down mm. to the beach. So it, it actually became a map of A1A and a map of a specific mother sea turtles track at the same time. Where, what, uh, what town was that? It, um, it's in Melbourne Beach on the other coast. It's mm -hmm. um, kind of south of like where the Kennedy Space Center is, mm -hmm. south of there. So um, yeah, so it became a map of two different things. So I thought, well, this is perfect for this exhibition. It also reminds me of a circuit board. I don't yeah. know if anybody- Yeah, I can see that with all the, or the old time telephone wire things. Oh. So, yeah, it was, I, after I started to outline all the texture, I then questioned the wisdom of doing that because it took me forever. I was like, I'd go for an hour and I'd get like an inch, square inch all like drawn in, but I liked the effect, so. And yeah. it's old. Mm -hmm. Someone bought it. I, yeah. Yeah, Congratulations, cool. Diane. Yeah, yeah. That's, cool. that's, that's fantastic. And I just want to take a moment to um, thank all of our members and students for not only being in the show, but for continually supporting everything we do here at the Art Center. Um, Diane, of course, you're one of those, one of those people. We have several others um, with us today. So um, <clears throat> very exciting. I've seen touching on some of uh, David's notes here about your work. He, he was really catching on to the ambiguity of, of scale, I guess, you know, where this could be a close up of a turtle track, but it could also be a flyover of, um, you know, Kansas or something. So. Yeah, it definitely has the city feeling mm -hmm. on the side, all the development and then the road down the middle. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing, Diane. We really appreciate it. Thank you. If I can make a quick comment. Thank you, David. Oh yeah, David, yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, the reference to the sea turtle is wonderful. And I, I didn't catch that. Well, no, you wouldn't on this painting. I, I, I would be surprised if you did. So, but, but uh, by the same token, in looking at this as an abstract, and I love it just as an abstract painting and, and very, very successful. Um, mm -hmm. But if the idea that this, and this would have occurred to me anyway, without knowing about a theme, that this could be a map, this could be a view from overhead, that there was a natural occurrence dividing two different communities of objects. Yeah. And so uh, uh, it's, it does both so well. I love it. So Thank you, great. Thank you so much. Excellent. Uh, next we'll speak with um, Leslie Jeffrey, uh, who's an artist living in Largo and uh, Leslie shows a lot around Tampa Bay, um, and her website here is Leslie Jeffrey Art. Uh, Leslie is such a prolific artist. Um, you want, want to follow her on Instagram, too. She's, 
she's always posting new work and so very exciting to have her with us. Leslie, are you with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, there you are. Great. Okay, very good. <laughs> so, yeah, we're just having a shot here of, of your piece in context with, of the show. Um, and then here it is. One, please tell us about your about your work here. Well, this one is much more of fly over over Kansas kind of thing. Um, it started out basically as an abstract. Uh, I love painting. Um, my realistic work, people really like more, but I enjoy this. Uh, so I do more of it. Uh, mostly I was thinking about the mark making, scratching. I worked a lot on the surface uh, before there were any roads. Um, a lot of scraping back into wet paint, um, many subtle, similar colors uh, overlapping. Uh, I love looking out the window of planes and seeing the landscape, but I stayed with these all muted colors. And uh, when it was at the very end, I started laying in some roads. And then people always seem to like it more when there's a, some center of interest or something they can relate to. So I put in the interchange to kind of give it a, a, a focal point. And um, I, I thought it worked out very well. It's the first time I've shown it. So I was very pleased. Yeah, that's yeah, a really nice. Really nice piece, Leslie. Um, and I just want, so everyone knows that you work in acrylic. Um, so to get this kind of layering, you kind of have to work quickly or do you mix mediums in there? Uh, there's a, a little medium in there, but mostly it's just uh, some of it dries and I go back in paint again and some of it dries and go back in and when it's half dry, do some scraping mm -hmm. and um, pulling away. It, it has a, an encaustic feel, Leslie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, people can see in these detail shots the sort of impasto uh, effect, but the surface is, is alternately matte and uh, has some slight sheen in areas, but really reads a lot like wax almost. So, the, so subtle, the palette as well. David, did you have any thoughts? For us on, on this one? Oh, lots, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it brief. Okay. <laughs> um, th th this painting is um, when I did my initial walkthrough, it was one of the first things that I, I saw. Um, and I thought, wow, that's, I, I like that. Um, I'll come back to it, and I, which I did. And as I went through and I saw all, all the interpretations of the theme that people had done and all the works, I kept turning around and looking back at this one. Mm. But, you know, there's there are things I need to learn about this painting or it needs to tell me. And I ended up, this is the first one I pulled the chair up in front of. Mm. And, uh, um, really love seeing it. It has qualities of, uh, again, the surface, I think, is what attracted me the most sitting close to it. A photograph can't uh, can't make the statement that the painting does when you're sitting there looking at it. The surface is magnificent. Yeah. And the uh, the roadways, if you want to interpret them uh, that way, uh, are just enough to break that up to give it some other substance. And I, I just love it for what it is. It's great. But uh, I spent a lot of time in the desert, and that was part of uh, the intrigue for me. I've never been in space, but from 40,000 feet, this is kind of what it looks like in some of those places. So um, I, I, I liked it all the way around. It's just wonderful, beautiful. I, I thought it, that it's reminiscent somewhat of cave painting as well, I felt. Very. And, and I can testify that night when David was doing the judging that at, by, at the end, it was like uh, I was witnessing a love affair. <laughs> <laughs> he got real close and just sat in the presence of, of your painting, Leslie. Um, it, it has a mystery to it. It really do, has that mysterious allure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, David, I just had a, a quick question as, as a judge. Um, how, how, 
much of a role does you know this kind of finished framing play in 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 your selection you know um does that play a role at all that that there's a finished frame on it or are you looking pretty much at the at the imagery and that's it uh, i'm i'm not looking for that uh, it doesn't hurt and uh, i love the way this is presented but if had been if it had been just a wrapped canvas it wouldn't have made any difference mm -hmm. it made the same impression on me okay uh, if i see a work that is poorly presented that yes that could make a dent but uh, uh you don't have to have a lavish frame if you know how to finish the work mm -hmm. i really appreciate that question and and that yeah. and your response david because that's it's it's a good question yes it's really useful for for the artists that might not be the case with everybody right um, right now so if you're in the marketplace and you really need to be concerned with that but uh, for, for me, uh, um, fully, a full, fully wrapped canvas, I, I've had many of them in my house and uh, they don't need a frame. Um, but what you've done here with that frame is beautiful. So yes, very elegant. And it's heavy too, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we in the, the larger gallery shot, uh, there's more a sense of the scale, but it's a large painting. Yeah. It's, really has presence yeah the canvas itself is is three by four feet and then you've got four inches on either side of frame so yeah it's it's a sizable piece yeah well thanks a lot leslie thank you so much uh next we'll hear from casey cavanaugh uh artist living here in clearwater um she's got a pretty cool instagram page you check that out casey are you with us I am. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Mm -hmm. um, you've got three pieces in the show. Today we're going to focus on your award-winning piece. Um, here's, here's the two that we're not going to talk about here <laughs> and <clears throat> here. And um, as Catherine mentioned, all three of your pieces have sold. So if you want to see Casey's work in person, you better run on in. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, this piece here, <clears throat> this blue piece um, called Track and Discover. Um, I think we'll let you share about, about your work, Casey, um, how you make it and um, what this piece, what you're touching on here. Okay, so if you're a sci-fi fan and you understand Star Trek, then you know one of the new releases is Star Trek Discovery. And the show is on CBS and it is fabulous. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. I love everything sci-fi. I even wore my Star Trek shirt today, just so oh. I'd say, for those of you who don't know. Um, but I do love all sci-fi. I actually wanted to be an astronaut. So when I was nine, I said, hey, mom, dad, put me in space camp. And then after that, I'm going to have to go to military school because I'm going to be a shuttle pilot, okay? And they said, no. <laughs> oh. oh. I know. So I, I long for the day to be within the stars. And um, so I like working in the female form and I acquired uh, a bunch of different um, molds. And with this particular one, I casted it with uh, spray foam, learned a lot about that, wear gloves. And um, I, I needed to, and you'll see this on Instagram, a lot of, I wanna do something, a throwback to old Star Trek. And so I needed to enhance certain areas of that particular figure, um, the old style pinup. I really was really going for that form because in the original Star Trek, the women were beautiful and they're very voluptuous. And so <laughs> I said, okay, I do everything in female form and I wanted to do an homage to the female uniform in Star Trek Discovery. So um, me and my 3D printer, my resin printer, and some stellar cartography maps, put it all together, and this is what you got with a little bit of sparkle. And now, now how does a resin printer differ from a 3D printer? A resin printer uses liquid resin that you pour into it, and it goes through... Uh, 
a very interesting molding process. I wish I could videotape it for you to see. I'm sure that somewhere you can see that, but um, it's in case. And when it comes out, it has support structures after it's been, it's slowly pouring and hardening. And then it has to go through a final hardening process afterwards. Um, and usually the resin printer, you can get smaller pieces with more detail. And with the 3D printer, you're using a filament on a roll, kind of like a spool of thread, if you will. And that goes through an extruder and it heats up. And again, it will print and it gets solid as it's cooling and forms. However, it can print bigger with detail. So the difference between resin and the 3D printer is gonna be scale. So smaller and bigger, and then getting that detail on the smaller one. The 3D printer is not that super great. You can fine tune and get it as detailed as you can, but it does have limitations. So it's nice having both to work with. So when you're um, cast, casting the resin, uh, do you add the coloring after or? You can actually use color resin or they have clear resin. Um, uh, two seconds, I'll show you real fast. <laughs> so this is a resin print and it has more translucent values mm -hmm. to it. I know if you're a sci-fi fan, then you'll recognize this as a power crystal from Stargate Atlantis. Uh -huh. I'm such a fan, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> whereas, you can also get them in solid colors as well. And I tend to print everything in gray because it lends itself for painting, whether it's going to be lighter colors or darker colors. Gray is perfect to work in both of those colors to add on. But I like to paint everything. I, I loved the fashion elements with the zipper and the... Thanks. My husband freaked out. He goes, did you take one of my shirts and cut it up? I said, not today. <laughs> uh -oh. Now I've been known. <laughs> we'll I can grab, I will. But I've had a lot of fun. And I, you know, I want to say thank you for the opportunity because I, I've been in one other art show in St. Pete and it, it's my Dunedin family. You are just so warm and welcoming that I finally felt courage to put my art out there for others to see and not be so you know uh reserved about what the judgment would be and i thank you david even though i don't have your comments yet i will get them when i go to the art center later for sure for taking the time to adjudicate all of this and i look forward to hearing everything you have to say about my work because i'm always looking to improve we all can improve in many many ways and i appreciate that so well, if, thank you family if thank david you. if david would like to share a little bit right now we we could do that i'd be happy to do that he's um, gonna write it down <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the the, the judges okay, perfect i thought i sent that to everybody but go, go ahead david yeah, the, the copy is is probably going to be better than what i'm going to come up with right now but um <laughs> I, 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 I like, I'll start off by telling a story many years ago, Nancy and I decided to go to Key West and we piled into my uh, Suzuki Samurai and uh, jammed it full of stuff and put two bicycles on the back. Spent our first night in Naples, found out that Star Trek, the next generation was debuting on TV and we had a great vacation in Naples. We never left. Wow. <laughs> day, every day we were there. So, uh, yes, I'm a geek. And I, but I, there's something very magical about what you do with these figures. This one in particular, yes, I like the space theme, but I also like the fact that it was handmade. It was a little, I don't want to say rougher, just different around the edges than the others. It didn't have that feeling of having been bought and painted. And then the theme was was just fantastic. And it sort of, it brings us into um, distant unknown places. You use color extremely well to do that. It's deep, it's cold, yet it's inviting because there's so much out there. 
And that's the whole idea of, uh, about Star Trek and a lot of other things. I just thought it was incredibly engaging if you love that kind of adventure and that kind of uh, mystery. So uh, congratulations. Well, thanks. I hope that we all go on a space adventure together sometime soon. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we have something other than the shuttle now. Oh, oh my goodness. Thing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, my. Sounds like David, you and I can talk in later times. That'd be great. <laughs> Go back to that one, the longer shot, if you could, Nathan. I just all of a sudden, no, no, you will both of those. Look at the shadow on that. And now the other one. There. Oh, wow. Well, talking about the form and building the, yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I enjoy, I tried. I tried to uh, capture everything Star Trek Discovery and I look forward to future events and congratulations everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Such a great community. I do want to say that Casey is a teacher in an arts, uh, an arts education teacher and she teaches in our Summer Art Academy and she's really beloved. Oh, thanks. We get to see her every summer. But during so, the yeah. thanks, those are my children. I don't have kids, so I get to borrow them. So if you're sending your children, thank you. They're a blessing. We love them. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Casey. Thanks, David, again. Um, our next artist uh, who's been awarded third place is Bonnie Hendricks. Um, Bonnie's not with us today. Um, she also does not have any digital presence, so we'll be speaking specifically about this piece. Um, she did share some um, thoughts about the piece that, that we can share with you. Here's her work here. Um, so the inspiration for her assemblage uh, came from Mark Twain's travelogue, Innocence Abroad. Uh, she had a book of sheet music and a sketch of the Old Mermaid's Inn from the 1800s, an old hymn book, and two photographs purchased in an antique store in San Antonio, Texas. She used these items along with the old map of England to weave an adventure for Ava, or Eva, Ava, <laughs> Eva. Um, Bonnie is the, uh, an amateur artist with no studio or website. Um, she has been taking classes here though for 10 years. Um, her first class was with Tony Hutfield. Is that right? Hutfields. Hutfields, mm -hmm. um, who teaches assemblage. Um, and Bonnie has learned a lot about composition um, from Tony. She's also taking classes with Melissa Miller Niece, who is uh, one of our most cherished um, instructors who excels at colored pencils. Um, just absolutely wonderful. Um, so a really great teacher for color theory and balance. Um, Melissa also uh, encouraged Bonnie to enter the mapped out exhibit, um, which is something that all of our instructors do um, and which they should be doing right now because guess what? Our next student member faculty show is coming up quickly um, in April. So we're looking forward to seeing Everyone's um, everyone's work again this year. It's one of our favorite shows. Uh, David, did you have uh, some thoughts that you wanted to share about Bonnie's work here? Sure. Um, I, th I it, it's first of all, it's a wonderful change, or um, um, it it makes a statement about everything art can be. We've seen abstraction um, and uh, a variety of terms we could throw around. This is found objects. <clears throat> and I, I was a little bit hesitant about giving it high consideration because, well, most of it's found objects, but at the same time, what's wrong with that? And the more I looked at it, the more I uh, saw how ingenious it was. Uh, very intriguing. And it, it just it drew me in and I wanted to be on that, that uh, trip, that voyage that they made. Um, with who, with father, yes, journeys with father. Everything about it 
uh, uh, was nice. There's a lot of variation. There's handmade things, handwritten things, but the way the composition was laid out was absolutely wonderful. So it was a, a real winner. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the, I think you're right. The more you look at this, the more, more interesting it becomes, especially knowing that a lot of the materials that she used are not actually hers. They're, you know, she bought them somewhere else. And so, but she's telling this sort of imaginary story with these images and, and, you know, maps and, and like the first presumption is because of the title travels with father, that these are somehow her family or something and that she knows these people and that this is an actual trip that, you know, she took or someone in her family took. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. I'd also like to say uh, that I applaud Bonnie for the, since this is her first show, I think that she's submitted to that, that takes a lot of courage and it's an, an exquisite piece, so thoughtful and beautifully crafted. And I just, I applaud her for taking that, that, step out that risk and I hope we see more of her work going forward mm -hmm. yeah I agree um well Bonnie we wish you were with us <laughs> and hopefully Bonnie will be able to watch this um recording by the way we're recording th this reception and it will be on our YouTube channel um in the future so we'll let you all know when that happens Um, our next artist is um, Sue Beach, uh, who has been awarded one of two honorable mentions. Um, Sue lives in Spring Hill, which is kind of a drive from here. Um, <laughs> she's, she's so dedicated um, to her um, classes here. We see her a couple times a week, I think. Um, uh -huh. And uh, to learn more about Sue, you can go to suebeachart.com. Um, welcome, Sue. Uh, I can hear you. Um, Thank you, Nathan. And why don't you tell us a little bit more about your piece, Heaven on Earth? Sure. Um, well, I'm a little background about me. I'm a retired art teacher from Buffalo, New York. And uh, I believe Nathan is also from that area. Uh, yes. And, uh, you know, I always enjoyed teaching. I also raised three sons. So my life was very, very hectic and busy. There wasn't a lot of time for me to explore my own voice and do a lot of my own work and have a journey artistically. So uh, my husband and I retired in our mid fifties and uh, we had the opportunity to move down to the Gulf Coast, the Gulf Coast, excuse me, of Florida. And uh, just coming here, especially in the winter time is, such a wonderful experience and to be able to live here and have that opportunity to see the beautiful sunsets and be in the water, especially during the winter time to me is like heaven on earth. Uh, the water has always had such a medicinal and soothing and calming quality to me. Um, and it's a bit like finding the fountain of youth or a sense of new life, being able to be in Florida. Um, in terms of the actual composition, uh, I love a lot of contrast in my work. So I love putting complementary colors together. So I often use oranges against blues in my work or yellows and purples and reds and greens. So that contrast of complementary colors was very exciting to me. Um, and the figures kind of walking towards the sun to me, it's like the sun is just so welcoming and pulling us in somewhat. Uh, so that was my idea for the, the name of the painting, which was Heaven on Earth. Um, I also love the breathtaking beauty of the sunsets here. Uh, I think because uh, we're at sea level, the skies different than in Western New York seem so much bigger to me and so much taller and the sunsets really are a work of art in their own right. Um, in terms of the underpainting, which is a map, um, I actually went back to the store and got a couple more of these maps because I just thought it was such a fun idea that I think I'm going to do a series of them. Uh, 
I wish I could say I was clever and that was my intent all along, but actually uh, I was in a store, an art store, buying some liquid acrylic paints to do this work of art. And coming up the last row, I saw some specialty papers and uh, one on the rack was the world of hemispheres. And I thought, boy, that would be a terrific underpainting for the theme mapped out. I knew that I wanted to put the images of uh, the pier in clear water, as well as the sunbathers. Uh, I take a lot of photographs uh, to inspire me for my work and knew that I wanted to do something to do with the water and the sunsets and being able to have the opportunity to spend my winters here uh, and my life here right now. And so uh, that was my idea for the painting. And so I experimented with acrylic paint. And uh, would you believe this is only my second acrylic painting ever? <laughs> so uh, I had fun experimenting with the, the juxtaposition of the warm and the cool colors. And uh, then I painted on the, the specialty paper and then I adhered it to a panel and uh, really had a lot of fun painting the sides. To me, it looks like a canvas, not so much a panel with uh, the acrylic paint on it. Yeah, no, you're right. And um, up close, the paper has a, a little bit of a texture, if you could see it here. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that was actually something I was wondering about is um, I'm glad you said that it's on paper, which is then mounted to a, a panel. Um, it's beautifully, yeah. the craftsmanship is beautiful. All those elements uh, melded together. You did a beautiful job, Sue. Oh, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> and if I could just say too, thank you to Catherine and Nathan for the opportunity to be in the show and a special thank you to David for choosing my work that meant a lot. And uh, I'm kind of on my journey of being an artist and showing and selling my work. So that was a wonderful thrill to be pegged to get an award. Um, and the Dunedin Fine Arts Center has just been such a welcome experience in my life. It's very holistic in that you can go to the center to imagine and plan works of art and create them. And then they even give you an opportunity to show your work and hopefully sell your work. So uh, it's just such a terrific organization and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thank well, you. Well, thanks for, thanks for making the hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I, I just wanna put this out there because Sue and Mary Ellen Caesar, your neighbor and friend who I think is here on this Zoom, uh, mm -hmm. that, that a piece was done, a video interview with Sue and Mary Ellen. Uh, both of you, uh, we so uh, are so grateful for your participation and uh, all of our special events and special exhibitions and see, get, <laughs> Are you coming to classes? But but Heather, our uh, former uh, content developer uh, here at DFAC, did a great video interview with Sue and Mary Ellen. And I feel like that's viewable somewhere, uh, maybe on our YouTube, Nathan, or on our, our social media. I think there's a way to trace that back because it's an, a wonderful interview. Thank you. Thank you. And really kudos to everyone at the museum because uh, even during the pandemic, it has still been a very safe and welcoming place to come and be with like-minded artists and create things. And, uh, you know, during the pandemic, especially, I think it's been so important for us to have a sense of community still and to have a sense of connectedness and uh, you inspire us with your challenges. They're so thought provoking. And we come up with things we might not have come up with had you not given us these challenges. And uh, thank you for remaining open and, and giving us the opportunity to be together. Our privilege and it's our, it's our joy, definitely. Mm -hmm. David, do you have any thoughts to share on Sue's piece? Sure. <laughs> you. Uh... 
you have a very bold palate and you're <laughs> successful with it. And that's not always easy. Um, mm -hmm. When I first looked at it, I thought, wow, there's a lot happening there. And the more I looked, the more I liked, and the more I realized, you know, whoever whoever painted this made all these colors work together. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow. This is... But the addition of the drawing, the hemispheres over it, is what kicks in another level of magic for me. We've all been that person, those people who are in 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 the in the water there in the shallow water watching the, the sunset. Standing there in that situation or swimming and in that salt water, my imagination would start going out and I would start thinking about other places. I would start thinking about things that I wanted to do, uh, sailing that I wanted to do, whatever it was. But it was always a magical place for me. And I think it is for almost everybody who would go there. And to juxtapose that or or lay that over is so clever and it does something to the composition it just really makes it pop and uh, i was fascinated with it and really loved the piece how did you uh how did you get that map on there uh you know i have a lot of different products that uh i was in anita woods classes and uh she has taught us to take our watercolor paintings and adhere them to panels uh, we've just been talking a lot about the presentation of our work and when we show it or sell it, you know, how would it look the best in a gallery. And she was showing us that some of her paintings, rather than putting them under glass with a mat and a frame, if you mount them on a panel, then uh, it's a different situation in that uh, it almost reads like an acrylic or an oil painting. Uh, and after you put an adhesive gel, uh, you can get a matte medium, a heavy or a light medium to adhere. You put uh, on both sides. So underneath the world map, I put an adhesive and then also on the panel itself. And then I situated the map with, with the painting on it on top of the panel. I used a rolling pin to make sure I got all the bubbles out. And then I put tracing paper on top of that set it on the floor and for 24 hours, put very heavy books on it so that it, I don't think it's ever coming off. <laughs> uh, and then if it was just a true watercolor painting, I would put three coats of Dorland's wax on it, uh, but because watercolor doesn't usually sleep, but with acrylic paint, it's a lot more permanent. So I didn't need to put the Dorland's wax on it. Hmm. Well, the result is fabulous to me. I, I just love it. So congratulations. Oh, thank you, David. I'm also glad to hear you and and uh, and others uh, in this talk talk about uh, the welcoming or embracing nature of the art center. Uh, mm -hmm. That was important to me and Nancy when we were there a long time ago. And uh, so true, so true. The the, the staff and volunteers uh, uh, are doing a great job. So you know, carry on. I'm glad you're a part of it. Thank you, so am I. Thanks a lot, Sue, um, for sharing all that about your work. Um, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we'll speak to <clears throat> uh, Glenn Carlin, who is our um, second honorable mention awardee. Um, Glenn, you've got a Facebook page um, and I, I put your Instagram page on here because um, it's a, it's a real nice, concise presentation of the portraiture that you do. Um, Thank you. And uh, your piece is over right here at the entryway of the, of the gallery. <clears throat> it's a, a smaller piece, but quite um, probing, I would say. I love, I love the expression of this young woman and you painted it on a map, so uh, maybe a little bit similar to Sue. Can you tell us some more about this piece? Yes, uh, can you hear me clearly now? Oh yeah, perfect. I'm, yep. I'm kind of new to this, so. Uh, yes, the the start of this, I was a little late to the party and I, I, I was waiting in between painting and I'm in painting and oils and the, my paint wasn't dry, so I, I, was, I saw the 
the show was going to be happening in five days. And I said, well, well, let me see what this takes a look at this. And so I started messing around and I love maps. And I thought, wow, maps, I love them. And I had this old topographical map from Sedona, which I love Sedona so much. And uh, I started out with that concept of a map. And of course, I wanted to keep pursuing my, my portrait work. And so I combined the two in my mind. I said, okay, how am I going to do that? And I had to work kind of small and I was kind of concerned about the painting paint not being dry enough by the time I entered into the show. So I only had a couple of days, two days to do it. <laughs> so well done. Yeah, it turned out great. Yeah. yeah so uh, it was, uh, it was really wonderful that you had this concept because I really needed it. And it was, a, it was just mm. a really cool thing to happen for me. So when I, uh, I, I took the map and I scanned it and I, I printed it out. So I kept it kind of small and uh, and then I started working. Uh, I mounted it on uh, a um, masonite board, a, a prime masonite board, and uh, and then I started working the portrait over it. What I didn't realize was how wonderful the I was using like a more of a uh, earth earth colors, and I used a lot of uh, uh, okras. Uh, and I used a lot of transparencies and it worked. I was just surprised. I thought, wow, this map, I was thought that the, the portrait was going to be more solid. And then when I started looking at transparency, wow, this is kind of cool. And so I, I kept working the idea of a transparency with the mapping and uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, the paint dried, I think, uh, an hour before I took it into the, sh into the show. <laughs> so um, We love that when it has that fresh scent, uh, sort of a sense around experience when artworks come in. Yeah, it, it, it really. sounds like it, it could be a, maybe if you wanted it to, a, a, a new pathway for you, a new. It, it has, Nathan, it's wonderful because I started thinking, wow, you know, the possibilities of relating because the, the portrait is of the woman who the town of Sedona was named for, Sedona. So it was like there was a compliment between who the painting was in the image and the map. And, and so I started thinking of all the different possibilities with uh, different things and not just maps, but I, I had the concept of repurposing some of these old paintings where you have an old painting and you can, you can paint over time with transparency uh -huh. and and kind of get these dichotomy between things going on. So I, I think it's a wonderful uh, opening. You guys opened my brain up a little bit here on this thing. Too. <laughs> could, you, could you tell us, Glenn, could you tell us, do you know much anymore about this woman, Sedona? I didn't know that Sedona was named after a specific. Well, when I, yeah, I spent quite a few uh, times in Sedona and there's a, a rustic uh, area there where, where they had pioneered it. And the pioneers there were, uh, you know, they found this magical place and they just started camping there, basically. And they had a, a, their old homestead. I actually visited their homestead and it was kind of broken down and it had a little water wheel. It was beautiful. And uh, there was a little bit of a story about it. And the story went that the, the city was named after the man's, uh, uh, the husband, the wife of the husband that founded the place. Well, her name was Sedona. So uh, that's how the name originated. So and where go. did you find, where did you find <clears throat> this picture of hers? Uh, well, <clears throat> it's not a picture of her. I'm, I hope to make that clear. And there was no, or there's no picture of oh, okay. her. So I took uh, sort of an imaginative idea. And I, I like the idea of her looking back at the viewer. I wanted this sort of the strong personality uh, look and with sort of like a defiant, strong, original, pioneering American woman type, or you know, get it done type thing. And, mm. and they they were strong people back then. So that was that was how I kind of created the image from a more than just one model, one more idea. So it was really it's hard to, yeah, that's great. This is hard to explain what, how I came about with it all, but it, it was so much fun. I enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite pieces in the show, I will confess. It, I, I forget at what point it came in, but 
it just was so powerful to me. And it definitely lends itself to uh, creating the story, the, to the viewer creating a story for it. And I think that happened with David, as I remember that night when he was looking at, at uh, everything. You want to share your thoughts, David? Sure. Um, yeah, it was very captivating. And uh, it's interesting to hear your story behind it, um, including technique. Uh, congratulations on your experimentation. It looks like it's going well. But um, the more I looked, the more I liked. I didn't know if she was Native American or not, but um, I could see the, the map. And I love the way that uh, the transparency worked. And I see her defiance. And so it's been fun to hear your story because those you answered a lot of my questions. Uh, but I wonder who she was and, and why is she giving me that, uh, that tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, very, very nice. Thank you. Yeah, great. <clears throat> well, we're lucky to have it. Um, yeah, I love this piece too. Um, just to let you know a little bit more about the curatorial process about you know, we have two other shows um, in, in our main galleries. Well, we have, and then we have uh, Rachel Simmons upstairs. And a lot of these shows do have to do with journey or use of the land or our relationship to the land or our relationship to traveling through space and time. So <clears throat> I think this one really um, connects to the um, Alex Torres and Bruce Marsh show the, the relationship between the human uh, figure and, and landscape. So quite interesting. Uh, I, I studied under Bruce Marsh a little bit back in the day. Oh, wow. Uh, and, okay. Uh, and Great. had, uh, had, I was at a couple of shows with him in the seventies. Oh back, my God. Long, long, a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Um, well, that's, that's uh, those are our award winners. So congratulations, everyone. Thanks for telling us more about your your work. Um, thank you, David, for sharing your thoughts and again for uh, judging the show. Um, oh, there's a sorry, a little close up. You can even see the elevation markers here. Well, <laughs> Um, we have a lot of ways to um, engage with the exhibits here at the Art Center. Um, obviously, you can come in. We're open. Um, we're open 10 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, of course, you know to wear your masks, and we take temps at the door. Um, and as Sue Beach mentioned and several others, how the lengths that we've, we've gone to, to remain safe and, and welcoming for everyone. Um, we also have a, uh, a program called Enriched Curator Tours. Um, these are something for groups between five and eight. Um, and what we try to do here is walk through all the exhibitions and invite um, a, a select number of artists to either be present in person or to um, join us via Zoom, um, who will be able to engage directly with the people on the tour. So if you uh, have a group of people between five and eight, um, we'd love to talk about um, how we can host your group. Uh, it's, it's fairly engaging and fairly personal. So it's really, it's a really fun time. Um, and then I just wanted to remind everyone about the student member faculty show coming up. Forms are on the website, as well as um, you can grab them in person here at the Art Center. Um, if I, my memory serves me correctly, which it usually doesn't, but we'll, we'll give it a whirl here. Um, the entries are due, um, March 22nd through the 24th. We'll be taking all, all pieces in and the, uh, exhibition opens April 16th. So. Yes. And then I'm just going to throw in there that our call to entry in the fall, which we'll get up on the website so people can start thinking about it, is spirit animals. 
Yeah. That's going to yeah. be fun. So get and, your, get your and, paintbrushes ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I also want to acknowledge our other artists who were here in, uh, in the event, uh, the Zoom event, our other mapped out artists, Dakota, Ubaldo, uh, Rachel, Isabel, Lisbeth. Thank you all for joining us today. Did I leave anybody else out? Yeah. We love, we love. If anyone, if any of, of, of you who are here with us um, would like to talk about your piece, we have them all here. So um, go ahead and uh, unmute. Uh, shout out <laughs> me 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 or um i think there's a way to raise your hand or or something like that so does anyone want to share about their piece i will if you don't mind oh I diane uh sorry we did not include your other piece um, oh okay oh, that's what i was going to talk about my other one that's okay no because yep anyone else and then Sue, Sue had a second one as well. That's right. And, uh, yeah, for yeah. the award winners, we just um, let you speak about the, uh, the award-winning piece. And um, then and Nathan, you have a piece in there. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> see, I had it first. It was completely hidden. Well, yeah, this, completely is, hidden this is... I didn't see it at first. I, in addition to being a an employee i'm also a member <laughs> and uh and i also have a i teach class here um diane Ash, diane Riddell is happens to be in my class this um this session we're having a really good time aren't we Dia diane um trying new things and working outside our box and um i think we're learning a lot this piece is um from the very early days of when i um started actually making art again here in Florida. So Sue, to your point about moving to Florida and kind of, you know, being medicinal in a way, um, I had abandoned uh, the kind of body of work that I was doing in college and decided that I needed to go into my studio and just start painting something. And I didn't know what it was going to be. And I knew that I only had an hour or two at a time because I was um, staying at home with our infant daughter. And so I just had to go out there and do something. And um, this is the kind of stuff that I started doing was these intertwining pathways. And so that's the kind of, that's where this piece connects to the idea of mapping. Um, you know, if you could map all of your thoughts and experiences um, of a day at the beach, um, for me, this is kind of what it looks like, a kind of a jumbled, <laughs> fractured, <laughs> fractured mess. <laughs> But uh, I included down here um, the silhouette or the outline of a manatee and a, a dolphin oh, um, yeah. for, for myself. So, um, you know, for those of you who know the work that I do now, um, my abstract body of work, what I took from this piece with, was the, um, the, the, this gesture. I was really, inter in, really interested in the, the hand that we put to the universe, the, the gesture that we put out there into, um, into, into life um, and into other people's lives and the interaction between um, myself and others. So that's a little bit about this one. Dakota, did you wanna say something? I'll, I'll talk about my work. Oh, good, Rachel. Rachel, okay. <laughs> let me get let me get to you here. Okay. Um, yes, I was very excited about um, hearing about this show. Um, I had um, a great interest in the live oak trees that are here in Florida, and the pattern on the live oak trees so much reminded me of travel. And it, you know, they, they, the markings, which are kind of short little markings, um, also reminded me of mapping, 
um, and how, um, you know, they, they really correspond with maps. So I found, or somebody had given me these maps of the sea, their boat, boat charts, and they were really fascinating to me um, because um, having lived, oops, uh, I can hear me now. Yes, I guess I muted myself. Oh, um, so and having lived on an island, um, I was very um, caught up with the ocean. And so these maps, um, which are boat charts, and you know, relating them as the, in the background and putting the, the the live oak trees on top, kind of connected and joined these two journeys um, that I have experienced in my life. So um, when I heard about this, I was thrilled because I had done this totally on my own last year, and was in the point of getting it framed when um, Catherine was so um, gracious to let me into the show at kind of a late date. And, you know, I was just happy to participate. So it's a combination of making um, markings of um, your journeys through the years. And, and that's what I did with it. So it's actually done in um, uh, Sharpies, <laughs> which I don't usually use. And um, it was kind of a fun um, exploration of how the markings related to maps. So that is what I did. And thank Great. you very much for letting me in it. Very nice. Rachel, where could people see more of your work? Do you have a website or Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, or? Yes, I do have a website. It's um, www.rachelstuartstudio.com. Great. Thank and so Rachel much. has a piece in the flag show right now. Yes, I have a, another piece, a print, um, in the flag show, which is going on at the um, Dunedin Fine That's Art. Right. That's right. Okay. And we'll be, we're going to be having a closing reception for the flag um, exhibition next Friday, the 26th. So everybody be on the lookout for, for that presentation. Um, Elizabeth, Graham, you Hi. raised your hand. Yeah. I don't know if you can see me. I'm trying to do this on my iPhone. <laughs> Let's see if I can, can see you, see? you, but we can hear you. We can okay, hear you. well, that, that's enough. <laughs> Let's talk well, about I your piece. Wanted to I wanted to thank you guys for everything you do at uh, DFAC. You know how important it is to me. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, anyway, regarding and it's great you know this is an interesting format and i'm learning a lot about everyone and their techniques and their you know heartfelt uh feelings they're putting into their work and it's really great sort of reaffirming why i'm an artist uh but to talk about the piece for a minute because i think sometimes with three-dimensional work it's a little tough to really get it all on a flat when you're looking at it even though it is a wall piece Mm. Um, it's basically Raku ceramic, um, in the shape of Africa, as much as I could render it that way. Um, it, just a minute about the glazing is, uh, red is an extremely hard color to retain when you're firing in Raku. Um, it's got matte and gloss glazes. And in this case, um, there's a lot of greens, a lot of browns, um, you know, and I, I put some of the red in for heat. Um, it's combined with copper that um, I treated with heat just to get it to rainbow a little bit and then mounted further on steel. Uh, and I've also included, which is, uh, found art, but came to me at the time when I lived in the Southwest, just like um, our other gentleman, forget his first name, sorry. Um, anyway, I've included the African trade beads. And really my motivation was that Africa has been through such torture forever. And it's such a fantastic country with the resources and people trying to bootstrap themselves up and 
you know, just kind of a shout out to with the African trade beads as to the culture and, you know, the way that people do trading there. And, you know, for the mapped out, I think that was something that was resonating because after a while, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but, you know, I, I kind of get a little sunsetted out. So I see them as not as much as I used to when I lived right on the water, but um, someplace where I've actually tried, meant to go and my trip was canceled long ago due to um, issues of closings at borders and all of that. Um, and I support all the creatures down there. So uh, I wanted to do something more mysterious like the dark continent and, um, you know, just honor the pain that people have felt there. That's it. This, uh, this is another one of my favorite pieces. I just thought it was so oh, successful yeah. and I uh, love the textures and the topographical uh, with the and the combining of the materials. I thought it was a super powerful piece and congratulations. Thanks, Kathy. You. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I got emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Is there anyone else who'd like to share? Dakota. Uh, yes. Hello. Dakota? Okay. All right. My um, piece is pretty literal, <laughs> but um, I couldn't help think about it because uh, most of you are, a lot, some of you may, some of I, you know that. I did a lot of traveling with um, my partner that passed away a bit ago, three years ago. So um, I couldn't help but automatically think of the first trip that we took overseas to Italy. That's where Joseph's um, mother was born and um, so, it wasn't this emotional making the piece. It was pretty joyful. But uh, we were gone for 16 days and um, I shot an average of a thousand pictures a day. <laughs> so oh, quite a few to go through. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the street photography, which is um, one of my favorite things to do is um, so enjoyable there because there's so many tourists and so many people taking pictures that um, people just ignore it. It's you could be shooting somebody and no one's ever even paying attention to you, which is um, just nothing like the States. <laughs> um, mm. So there was, I, I captured some of my favorite um, views. We traveled from Venice down to Pompeii and um, made sure we stayed in uh, different areas and took side trips, but enough to really get the feel of the uh, country, um, considering that we got up early, <laughs> little sleep and went go stayed moving all day long. Um, so it looks, I, I've never done a collage work or anything like this. So it, it, it was a struggle to get through it. Um, but um, I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. I did. Very effective. I like the way that you, you put it together and the torn edges, and it almost has an architectural feel in the way that you composited the, the images. And I like seeing you right in the middle of it. The <laughs> paper doll. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Here she is. You look so joyful. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dakota. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to share? We have several more pieces here. What about Ubaldo? I saw yeah. that Ubaldo. Yeah. Ubaldo, are you here? Still here with us? Um, 
This was exciting to have these works submitted by Ubaldo. It was the first time I had seen his work. And um, I really loved how they fit with this, this theme. It was such a departure and unique. Yes. There, there you are. It is. There. We hear you. Yep. Gorgeous. Hear me? Yes. Welcome. Tell us about your pieces. Well, I, I'm uh, always doing watercolors. And um, when, I, when I was uh, um, first invited to present my work, I, I thought, why not do something that uh, uh, always is on my mind? Because I live next door to a golf course. <laughs> and uh, sometimes when I start painting, I, I do it uh, with not a specific idea, and it, the the result it's is letting me know uh, what uh, should I use or to continue with my paintings, and these uh, areas of green combined with the colorfuls and the shapes of the golf balls mm. made me. Uh, do the next step and the reaction sometimes from the painting and the paper it is is letting me know where to go and and i try to do always something that is attractive to to the person that is looking at the painting mm. and and the result uh many people likes it and everybody sees different things in abstract paintings and that's uh, so exciting and enjoy it that's what I think. And thank you so much mm. for letting me participate. We thank you. Yeah, and I hope to see more of your work going forward. Thank Beautiful you, thank color you. combinations. Yeah, yeah thank you, Yubaldo. Um, Yubaldo, do you have your work online? Do you have a website or anything that people can see more? Uh, uh, well, usually I put only on, on Facebook. And but uh, as soon as I have a, a website, I will let you know. Okay, <laughs> Elizabeth, um, I'm sorry I missed that question with you and Dakota as well. Um, I, I, yes, uh, <laughs> it's but <laughs> I was trying to put leashes on dogs. Um, firebrand, all one word, dash studios.com, and I texted it uh, in the chat. I see it here. Yeah. Okay. Firebrand dash studios dot com. Dot com. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Nathan. And Dakota. Dakota, you have a, a website as well? Yes. Iartdakota.com. Iartdakota.com. Okay. Wonderful. Um, are there any other artists that would like to share about their work? Can I just say something real quickly, Nathan? Sure. Uh, you know, I find the Dunedin Fine Arts Center to be a work of art all in its own right. I'm just so fascinated by how the exhibits uh, are arranged and all of you on your staff have such a working knowledge of the elements and principles of design. Uh, there's so much thought that goes into how you create and compose and organize groupings of things. Uh, sometimes the walls magically change to different colors. And uh, there's such an anticipation for me when I know something's coming and the paper's up on the windows. It's, uh, it's like a Christmas Eve kind of excitement. <laughs> and the doors are open and the paper's down. And then it's for me like Christmas morning. And I just get so excited to see what you have created. It It's like a working, breathing work of art in its own right. And uh, I just thank you for inspiring us in the way that you compose your exhibits. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much that means. Yeah, thank you, Stu. It's... <laughs> Yeah, we work, we work really hard on <laughs> it shows. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. And and to um a lot of what we do takes a lot of planning, but then I think the fun part of our job is is sometimes we do things 
because we want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We, we, have, we are given a lot of freedom, I must say, mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't have a better uh, ally than Nathan, and I, I always forget until after the end of the Zoom to say, but Nathan, I meant to say, you know, but he, it, none of this would happen if it wasn't for him with all the technical expertise and coordination of everyone, and really, I it's really thanks to Nathan that we have been able to do these Zooms and, and so much more, so much more that happens um, at DFAC, he is behind. Uh, but, but honestly for us, look, we get to work with, look at, we are the luckiest people <laughs> in the world to work with you guys and show beautiful, intriguing art and, uh, you know, feel um, that, uh, this work is is important work, and what a what a privilege. And we we could never forget, you know, our leadership in, in our board and our donors and all of the people who give us the latitude and trust in our abilities and silliness and spontaneity to, you know, create a place that people want to come to and 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 express themselves. <clears throat> so. Yes. Well, there's such a gorgeous sense of balance and variety and unity and harmony in your arrangements that it just makes us look forward to, oh boy, I can't wait to see what's next. So oh, thank you for giving us things to look forward to. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. We're talking about, uh, about exhibits and about Kathy and Nathan and the other people who helped. I used to do all that stuff, and I, I tried my best to do it as perfectly as I could the way I knew how to do it. Um, and I just have to congratulate all of you and commend you on the work that has been done in the exhibit since I left a long time ago. You're doing a spectacular job. They're far more perfect than they ever were. Oh, I mean, okay. You're talking about composition they're 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 really artworks in themselves but you 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 have to let the work speak first um down to the lighting you overlight something you've blown it you know if people look up and say wow look at the lights uh, you guys know you, you guys are really, really good so <laughs> Commendation. Thank you. Thank you. And the and really at the heart of it all is, and the, the privilege of it all is community. I mean, to me, that is that is the great gift and, and reward is being connected uh, with such a beautiful community. 